Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and including Nathaniel at seventeen, and myself as eighteen. Not bad. That's pretty good. It wasn't matter if it was one. As long as God's moving, we can. I'm telling you. <laughs> well. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight, and I think I have something to share with you that you're going to, I think you're going to enjoy. But last week, before we get started, but last week we talked about the tactics that Satan uses to try and bring people under his domain and to gain entrance into our, our lives. And... The truth really is that you and I are totally insignificant to Satan without Jesus. Without Jesus, we are nothing. I mean, we, we're toast. Uh, but with Jesus, we are a powerhouse. We have all the power and authority that we need. And we serve the victorious king. But he does have a master plan for you and I. And... What I want to teach you as I go through these different weeks is I want to teach you all the facets that go along with spiritual warfare because you've got to understand a lot of things that, that maybe might not have been understood before in order to have a total and complete, I guess you would say, dominance over this this. this satanic powers that, that are, are coming against us. So, the one thing that we have to remember is that Satan does know that his time is short. I want to stop here and I want to open up with prayer. Father, I just come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and I want to thank you for everything that you do for us. I want to thank you for this class. I want to thank you for all the classes. I ask that you bless each and every one. And all those that are in charge of the classes, all those that are teaching, Lord God, give them what they need. Yes. Equip them, Lord God, and anoint every class and allow everyone that is, is participating to receive what they need from these classes in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. We have an enemy that hates us. We have an enemy that wants to take us down. But... Because God knew that we were going to be faced with all these different things that come against us, He has given us the power, the authority, and He has given us and equipped us with what we need to be victorious. And we do have the victorious King that lives within us. So we, we know that we have the victory, but now you have to be honest with me. You have, to, you have to be honest. Most people don't know what they've got. Most people are not using what they have because they have no idea how to use it or even the fact that they do have it. And the church is suffering because of it. The church is absolutely, it's wounded. It is wounded. Amen. Satan has done his best to emasculate the church. Yes. He's tried to, he's tried to, totally and completely take all of the power out of the church. Because if he can get us to a point where we don't, we don't understand or we don't believe or we don't, we don't know, then he has total dominion. He can fly below the radar and he can get his work done. Okay? Now, I want to start off with saying that Satan knows that his time is short. I'm going to go to Revelation 20, and I want to look at verses 10 through 12, and I'll read these to you. It says here, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. And it says here, let's see now, where am I? 20, 10 through 12. Yes, okay. Um, mm, okay. Trying to 
Yes, that's exactly where I am. Let's just do, let's stay with uh, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. He knows that he is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And he also knows that it's not going to be long before that happens. So, think, but understanding that, we're going to move, move to the next thing here. <clears throat> There's something... This is this is the, this is the crux of my of my my teaching tonight. There is something that you need to understand that I'm going to be sharing with you about the end of the age. You see, I want you to realize that we have a job to do. We need to understand that there are people out there that need you and me that would understand spiritual warfare and be able to use it. My goal for this class is to get you to a place where you are able and you are willing to use what God has given you. Amen. You see, there are people out in the world and even some Christians that don't live their life the way they should and because they are doing this, they're in trouble. They are to a, they get to a point where they're on their way to hell and don't even know it. That's true. And I'm talking about people in churches too. But what I want to show you tonight, I think, is really, really important. At the end of the age. When the rapture takes place, you and I, Christians, that love the Lord and are dedicated to Him, we are going to receive a glorified body. Now, did you know that the sinners are also going to receive a body? Were you aware of that? And I'm going to prove it to you in the Word. They are going to get their natural body back. What you know, you reap what you sow. That's right. So if you sow with your body, you sow sin and you sow all kinds of lasciviousness and sin of any kind and lusts and everything else. You are going to get your body back because your body is going to have to suffer through eternity in hell. Now, before I go any further, think about it. All of us have experienced being burned, maybe on your hand or some way you've been burned somehow or another. Do you realize the pain that you experience with just that little burn? Can you imagine having your entire body in a lake of fire? Now I'm going to tell you now, next week I'm going to talk about hell. I am going to be giving you a breakdown scriptural breakdown of hell. And I think it's going to wake you up. It woke me up. As a matter of fact, when I was when I was pre preparing it, I broke down and cried because I know that I have children that don't want to hear anything about Jesus. I don't want to see them standing at the great white throne and being cast into the lake of fire. It would just, well, we'll get into that later. But they are going to receive a natural body. They're going to get their body back again. Like I said, the saints will receive their glorified body at the rapture. And I have some scriptures here if you want them. It's Philippians 3.21, 1 John 3.2, and Romans 8.29. Philippians 3.21. 1 John 3, verse 2, and Romans 8, 29. Yes, and of course we know about 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 52, and uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, uh, chapter, let's see, 4, I think it's uh, verse 15, I'm not sure on that one. But either way, the sinners received their body. 
So I want to go to Re Revelation 20 here, and I want to go over something with you. And I want you to take, I want you to listen carefully, and I want you to open your mind and your heart. Father, I just ask in the name of your son, Jesus, yes. open our hearts and our minds, please. Yes. Yes. All right. Remember I said that they're going, they're, they're going to get what they sowed? Yes. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall also reap. Okay? Now, let's look at Revelation 20. Or am I getting ahead of myself? I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'll hold it just a second on Revelation 20. Uh, I want to read 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 through 52 it says now i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither doth corruption in her inherit incorruption let's see that again now that i say now i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god flesh and blood flesh and blood the natural body cannot go to heaven it's a corrupt if this thing we know we've learned we've learned from from Romans 8 that that God does not have any anything to do with the flesh he said they, that any of us that operate in the flesh to him it's, it's an abomination basically because the flesh is an enmity with God all right now it says uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption so they, we, it says here right plainly, the body is not going to heaven. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We are receiving a glorified, incorruptible body. God makes it very, very clear. And those scriptures that I gave you up there in Philippians and 1 John and Romans 8 all tell you that it makes it quite plain. Now what I want to do is I want to take time to go to Revelation 20 and I want to break it down for you. 2013. Now remember what I said. I said that we're going to receive a glorified body, but the sinners are going to receive their natural body back. And they are going to have to suffer through eternity in that lake of fire. All right, 20, starting, with, starting in verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. When you go back to the original Greek, and you take this thing apart, death and Hades, death and hell, means the physical bodies of the unsaved, are going to be joined to their spirits. Anytime you hear the word death, it has to, unless God's talking about spiritual death, and God's not still talking about spiritual death here, death always refers to a physical body. Death. A spirit does not die. A spirit lives forever. So only those that are in a natural body die. So we're talking about death. Now, it says here, the sea shall give up the dead which were in it. That word dead is Strong's 3498. If you want to take that down, Strong's 3498. That word dead is actually the word corpse. Corpse means a dead body. Okay, now I want you to take this slow. I'm not going to go too fast because, believe me, this, it kind of hit me between the eyes too when God showed me this. And the sea gave up the dead. The sea gave up the corpses 
which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead. Again, that word dead is corpse, which were in them. Okay? Death and hell. Death and hell represent the death, the corpse, the body in hell, and hell gives them up. Now, it says here that every man is judged. Every man is judged according to their works. It doesn't say every spirit is judged. You with me? Yeah. Listen to me carefully. We're talking about bodies and we're talking about spirits. I don't want, I don't want to get you confused. We're talking about people that died and God's going to resurrect their corpse, their body again with them. And they're going to be reunited to their spirit just like we are going to get a glorified body. They're going to be reunited with their body. It says here, every man was judged, not every spirit. Men have bodies, not spirits. Spirits do not have bodies. Now, let's turn to Isaiah 66. I'll go here. Isaiah 66, and we want to look at verses 23 and 24. It says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Now let's go back here to verse 24. It says, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men. Now we're talking about, it says here in verse 23 that, that um, it shall come to pass from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. We're talking about, well, he says flesh, but we're talking about being able to see the bodies of men. It says here, and they should go forth and look upon the carcasses of men. A carcass is actually means a, corp, a corpse or a dead body. And when I looked it up in Funk and Funk and Mark, Funk and Wagnall. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> Italians have problems sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, it said in there that it was, it actually meant a dead body and a corpse. So a carcass is a dead body or a corpse. The bottom line, the bottom line is that sinners are going to reap what they sowed. And they will be getting their natural body back. They sowed in sin, and they're going to reap death. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. When you begin to realize, when you begin to realize that like my loved ones, might end up standing before the great white throne someday and have to be judged and then cast into the lake of fire. It kind of gives you a new perspective because you realize that not only are they going to be in terrible pain, terrible pain, but it's going to be forever. Now, forever is pretty hard for us to understand. Yeah. The best analogy that I've ever heard, I heard a preacher give this one time, and I liked it, so I committed it to memory. If you can picture a piece of granite, I'm talking granite, you know how hard granite is, a mile long, a mile wide and a mile high. Now we're talking about a cube of granite 
a mile wide, high and long. Once a year, a sparrow flies over to that massive piece of, of granite and sharpens his beak. The time it takes that sparrow to wear that mile cube of granite down to nothing by sharpening its beak is one day in eternity. That's the best I've ever heard of a description of what hell, I mean eternity really is. Eternity is a long time, forever and ever. We all know that time was created. God created time for us here on planet Earth. There was never time before that. It's always been eternity. So, so they're going to have to, whoever goes to hell is going to have to suffer for eternity. I just can't imagine that. There'll be no breaks, no R&R, &R, no, no vacations, no, no time down. You know what I mean? Holy smokes. Okay. God has a reason for all of this. Now, I want, you to, I want you to see that here in Isaiah 66, God makes mention in the 24th verse that their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. Now, all of us know that, in fact, let me go there. Let me go to Mark. Mark 9. Let me read it to you. Okay. Mark 9, 42 through 48. All right. 42 through 48. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than to have two hands uh, and to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Are you listening? Fire never quenched. <coughs> Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into king the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Over and over and over, Jesus emphasizes that their worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. So when you read back in Isaiah 66, and it says here, they looked upon the carcasses of men, the dead bodies of men, that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. You can see that the natural body is going to be in hell, burning and suffering in that fire. Now, to add to it, the word, the word worm is actually the word maggot. Oh. That's giving me a creep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maggots only feed on dead flesh. Can you imagine, can you imagine, and it says the worm, the maggots, shall never die, and the fire will not be quenched. You're talking about really suffering. The, one of the points I wanted to make is, when you realize that you have friends, we have friends, we have fellow, we have, we have people in our family that are, are going to hell, this ought to really spark us. Wait till you hear next week what God's given me on hell. Just wait till you, till you see the, the magnitude of what hell really is. 
and how bad it really is, it'll, it'll, it'll wake us up. Like I said, when I, was, when, I was, when I was studying it, I started to cry because I realized, hey, we're talking about some of my, my relatives and friends. But either way, we need to realize we better get busy. Yes, my brother. It makes me more thankful that God saved me from that, too. Amen. It makes me a whole lot more grateful. Amen. 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 You have so much to be thankful for. Yes. Because all the promises that we have in the Bible, every promise belongs to you now. Right. You're, you've, got a, you've got a Father in Heaven that loves you and wants just the best for you. As most of you know, because you've heard my testimony, you know, I, I stand here before you, I had terminal cancer twice, and he healed me immediately. I mean, one day I had it, and the next day I didn't. So all I can say is, we have something that others would love to have, but we are so, we, I don't know whether we're reserved, or whether we're afraid, or whether we don't want to offend anybody, and my, I say to people, how can you offend somebody that's already on their way to hell? They are already, they have no idea that they're in big, big trouble. You can't offend them. And if you do, so what? Tell them the truth. We, we know from Ezekiel, it tells us that their blood is going to be on our hands if we don't tell them. So be a big mouth like me. Get out there and tell them. I'll tell anybody. I told you, I think I told you the story when I went, the last time I went to the hospital, they, they were putting in a, what they call a loop recorder into my chest for over my heart just to make sure to check me for AFib. And thank God in three and a half years I haven't had any AFib. But anyway, um, when they were preparing me for that, the young lady that had come to me, I was on a gurney and they were going to they were going to wheel me into another room and put it in the IV and whatever they were going to do. So I was talking to her about Jesus and I asked her if she was born again and she said, what's that? What's born again? So I explained it to her and by the time we got into the other room and I was talking to her, she accepted Jesus Christ. Wow. You've got to... People are hungry. We live in a world that is spiritually hungry. And if we don't give them Jesus, guess what they're going to get? They're going to get Satan. They're going to get the, 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 the kingdom of darkness. And believe it or not, the church of Satan is growing at a very rapid rate. It's one of the fastest growing churches in America. Brother Joe, uh, yes. he was talking about we have the authority to speak, you know, when we're out. And a lot of people have lost their faith in Christ Jesus to not even want to speak to say, Lord, open up a door to be able to help me to do what I need to do. Like, for example, the other day, you know, you go to Walmart, it's hectic, you know, you. And I went in there, and it was lines backed up. And I mean, we have Jesus there to help us. That's what he's for. So as I was walking through Walmart, I said, Lord, show me some favor right now in the name of Jesus that somebody will open a cash register or something wipe up where I can get my things rung up and get out of here. So I'm walking back and forth, and I come back up toward the self, the self checkout center, and there's one right there. Nobody's at it, and I go in and check out, and I'm out. And I said, "Thank you, Lord, for opening that that restroom just for me, so I can get my things and get out." Today, you know, with the gas shortage and everybody's panicking, you know, that again is another example. You have the right as a Christian to say, "Lord." Make a way for me to be able to find gas. Mm -hmm. I need gas in my vehicle. So I'm going down the road, and I pull into the fast mark, and lo and behold, they're just giving out on the gas. So I walked into the place, and I asked them if they had a limit on their gas, because some people are limiting their gas. And this lady was standing there, and I'm like, you know, I said, people are really panicking over this. I said, 
Just like they did before, I said, but this too shall pass. <laughs> Just like the toilet paper thing that went on, I said, this too shall pass. I said, people have lost their faith in Christ Jesus. So if you just pray and ask God to open that door or show you that favor, yep. He hears your prayer. Yes. And that's what your father, that's what He's for. You may not be see Him, he, He's there. And yes. that gives you the opportunity to speak up and, and ask for that. And a lot of people are like, I would love to have that. All you got to do is speak. Yes. Like you're talking to, like I'm talking to you, is that Jesus says, show me favor, I open yep. up that door to where I can do what I got to do and get where I need to be. And he's opened the door for me the last two days to do what I need to get done. And I'm not by any means bragging or anything like that. But you have that opportunity. That's what it's for. You know, people get, and you can get frustrated sometimes. This can be frustrating. I understand that. But as you, and I'm not older, you know, I'm not, you know, as you get older, you get wiser. But I had somebody tell me today, I had somebody tell me that I never thought of. And I don't, I've never thought of this. And you said, you know, when you turn the, the word wow upside down or the mom upside down, it's wow. But he told me something that I've never, ever thought of. Women of wisdom. And I've never thought that. And that just kind of stuck with me. Women of wisdom. And, and that's what we have to do is use our wisdom and our knowledge that God's given us to pray to him. And all you have to do is ask him. And, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Right. So that's what that's what you have to do is just okay, Lord, just you know, because right. it can get frustrating. But I did, and he just I walked back down, and there was a, a self checkout, just nobody there, and I checked my things out, and I got out the door, and I mean it was okay. So that's you know that's what you just have to use. No problem. The authority that God gives you to and do. What it. she said is absolutely true. We do have we do have a lot of power. Um, I'm just told you about this loop recorder that they put in to uh, to my chest. I was going to a heart doctor in Roanoke, and they wanted to put in this device into my heart, and they were adamant. They wanted it in. They said I had AFib. They even gave me uh, blood blood thinners. Every blood thinner they gave me caused me to have internal bleeding. So I stopped them, of course, but I just didn't feel comfortable with it. You know how it is? And then I did a little research and found out that thing that they wanted to pin it, put in my heart, that uh, they have records that pieces of it break off and then float in your heart. And I said, no way to slide to heaven, so I found another heart doctor, and, <laughs> and I... I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't want this AFib. And I, like I said, I haven't had, had, had AFib for, for three and a half years with this thing in my chest. Now, I want to touch on just something else before we, before we end. But according to the Word of God, there will be degrees of punishment in hell. And I'm pretty sure all of us understand that. The thing you got to remember is it doesn't make any difference when you go to hell what kind of degree it is you're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I thank God that that He's merciful to some people and gives and they have degrees of, of punishment. Mm -hmm. But hell's going to be hell, yeah. and like I said, I don't want you to miss next week. I just don't want you to miss it because what God's given me. I want to share with you, it will really help open your eyes to why we need to be more adamant about speaking out and having people come into the kingdom and get saved. So please don't miss next week. But like I said, regardless of where you are in hell, you're going to suffer. Now I'd like to read to you from Luke, uh, the 12th chapter. There we go. Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 47 and 48. And it says, And that servant, I'm talking about degrees of hell now, and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. 
But he that knew not and did not did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. God, this is Jesus speaking, he has described here the fact that there are going to be some that get many stripes and some that will get few stripes. So we're talking about degrees of punishment. And then I'm going to go to Matthew, uh, the 11th chapter. Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 21 through 24. And it says here in 21, and this is Jesus again, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and si Sidon at that day of judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Do you see? God is telling us there are degrees of punishment in hell. And we need to, we need to recognize we've got a problem here. We've got a problem. We've got, we've got hell. We know that it's a place of torment, a place of, of total and complete pain and suffering. But now we've described that the people that are going to go to hell are going to receive their natural body. Now we're talking about a lot of pain. I, I don't know how much pain it would be just in the spirit, but I'm going to tell you, I, don't, I wouldn't want to go to hell with my body knowing I'm being cast into a lake of fire. And just wait until next week I'll describe that lake of fire. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's awesome. It's, 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 it's scary. And I don't want any of our relatives going there. All right. Okay, I think I've covered most of what I wanted to cover tonight. Are there any questions? Any comments? I I just want I just want you to understand. God loves us. All he wants us to do is understand his love. And he shows us this love in so many different ways. But right now we're studying the we're studying spiritual warfare. This is one of the gifts that I feel are so important for every one of us. Use your power and authority that Jesus gave us. It said right there in Luke 10, 19, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power for all the power of the enemy. We have what many, many people would love to have. Some way to protect ourselves. I don't know how to describe it, but I can tell you this. My wife and I have been living in this all of our married life. And our life primarily I feel it's pretty uncomplicated, wouldn't you say? Pretty much uncomplicated. Because we won't tolerate, we won't tolerate anything, anything from the enemy. You don't have to tolerate anything. Speak to him. Speak to him. You have the power. He's like a naughty child, always kind of trying to come in, trying to disturb things, trying to turn things upside down. Don't let him. Anytime you feel like something is going south, immediately stop. Yes. Identify it. Speak to it. Cast it out. Get rid of it. Yes. You have that power. Amen. Yes. Amen. Use it. Come on. Jesus didn't give it to you to sit on. That's right. That's right. He loved us enough to give us all that. Wow. And you never 
Brother Joe, you've been really, really encouraging to me with that because um, I had a down day one day and and, and um, I just spoke out and I said, not today, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you will not take my joy, you will not have my family, in the name of Jesus, and I just spoke to him and I told him, so this class is when, you know, when I'm able to be in this class, it just you really encourages me. Well, when I got next week, I'm starting my class back, but somebody's got to take me some notes. Because <laughs> I really want to hear this. But, uh, but yeah, that, I've got to where I'm learning to, to speak out, and I don't care if somebody sees me doing it, because I don't want the devil taking my joy from my day. Right. The Lord to speak it out. You are not today saying to the name of Jesus, you're not going to take my joy. You're not going to have my family. you got to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get thee behind me. And so it, I've, this class has really encouraged me Thank when you I'm very able much. to be in here. Thank you, Melissa. That's just really encouraged me. I want to, uh, I want to just mention something else. I don't want to be negligent on this. I have found and uh, if you want to classify it as spiritual warfare, I guess you can. But I have found that if I'm beginning to be trapped by the enemy, and sometimes, you know, we're all human. We all, we all sometimes have a, a moment of weakness, and all of a sudden you feel like the enemy's trying to take advantage of you, and you realize it. Not only can you speak to him, but God has shown me that one of the tools, one of the tools that I can use is praise and worship. I'm telling you, the minute, the minute the enemy starts coming in, and the minute I realize, hey, he's trying to take advantage of me, I begin to worship God. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I give you all my, I give you all my heart. I, I just love you and praise you and glorify you. I want you to be my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords. And I praise Him. And immediately, immediately, not five minutes later, immediately, that spirit lifts and gets out of there. So I'm going to share that with you. Use it. It's another tool. God gave it to us. Praise God. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Can we say I love you, Jesus? Lord, I sell out to you. I give you my heart and my soul. I love you, Lord. And pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't say enough about Jesus. I just can't. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just want to say thank you tonight for this class. I want to say thank you for all that's been accomplished. Lord God, help us to understand that this is real. They will get their, their, they will get their bodies back. All the sinners will get their bodies back. And, and some of those sinners belong to us. They're, they're family, Lord God. Please help us to reach out to them. Help us, to, Lord God, to show them the way. But more than that, Lord God, before we do that, open up their hearts and their minds. Soften their hearts and their minds. Help them to understand, Lord God, that, that this is true. Open their hearts and their minds to the truth of the Word of God. And Lord, we will be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, the praise, and the thanksgiving. And we offer it all to you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.